Tonight, a parent's worst nightmare, a Beloit woman's message to other parents after her young son was killed in a shooting. Plus, police arrest a man accused of holding a woman hostage in Whitewater. We'll have the latest on the case. And we're getting ready to celebrate with the best of Madison. We'll take you to this big party coming up. It's all ahead on News 3 Now at 5. And tonight at 5, we're bringing you a heartbreaking story that's only on News 3 Now. A Beloit mother experiencing grief like she never has before after losing her 10-year-old in a shooting last month. Our Catherine Merck tells us her message that she wants other parents to hear. My brain isn't wrapping around that he's gone. Ashley Gray is experiencing a mother's worst nightmare. I'm, I'm lost. Visiting her son Aiden's gravesite. I'm so numb, I don't, I still don't think it's real. Even standing here, I don't think that that's my son. She says she's been here every day since her 10-year-old died in a shooting on September 15th. Because I would rather be here than out here without him. I just, I'm broken. Ashley says another parent, Jose Manuel Sandoval Tenorio, left his nine-year-old son along with Aiden when the other boy shot and killed him with the gun that was left in the home. A criminal complaint was later filed, charging Sandoval Tenorio with a felony count of endangering the life of a child and a misdemeanor for possessing a gun without proper registration. It's not cool to have guns. They're, they're meant there to protect people and, and protect your homes, not kill children or anybody. As this family remembers their child, and this is his first birthday, this mother is also trying to wrap her head around how a weapon could be misused this way. And so if you have a gun, whether you have kids or not, you need to, to lock it up and, and keep it safe. Ashley returns to the gravesite and mourns her young boy who was taken too soon. He should be in school right now or playing with his friends, but instead me and his dad and his siblings get to come here every single day to see him. She wants others to know how a gun created her family's living nightmare. I shouldn't have to come to a grave to visit my 10 year old, but it's not fair. I called the Winnebago County Clerk of Circuit Courts this afternoon for an update on Sandoval Tenario's jail status. Records show he was let out on pre-trial release and he's back in court on Wednesday morning. Catherine, thank you. Thank you, Catherine. After almost searching for 12 hours, police in Whitewater say they have arrested a man accused of holding a woman against her will. Our Jalen Banks is in Whitewater on the street where the suspect was arrested. Jalen? Right now, I'm on the 300 block of Prince Street, where authorities took Jefferson Guzman Rodriguez into custody earlier today after he tried to run away from them not too far from Lincoln Elementary School. Around 1030 last night, authorities responded to the block, the 300 block of Janesville Street, where they surrounded a garage where they believed he was barricading himself into. After that, they got after they got into the garage, they realized he wasn't there. According to Whitewater City manager, they eventually found Guzman Rodriguez on the 900 block of Highland Street. He also says the victim at one point was strangled and knocked unconscious. An armed suspect is always dangerous. Um, it's my understanding that this person uh, doesn't have permanent residence in Whitewater. So our officers are looking into that. Uh, this person is certainly, certainly dangerous to the victim involved, and my heart goes out to her and anyone associated with it. He faces potential charges of kidnapping, false imprisonment, substantial battery, strangulation, and first degree recklessly endangering safety. Guzman Rodriguez is currently being held at the Walworth County Jail. Reporting in Whitewater, Jalen Banks, News 3 Now. Jalen, thank you. Nice to see the sun today, and we can expect some calmer weather this week. Meteorologist Jacob Montesano is on the weather patio. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Susan. We are seeing pretty much completely clear skies, but just because the skies are clear does not mean the temperatures are warm. Right now, 55 in Madison, not too bad, but considering it is below average, usually when we have complete sunshine, temperatures are fairly close to average, if not above it. But right now, we are seeing those temperatures in the 50s for a lot of Dane County. Now, there are parts of our area that is in the 60s, uh, Boscobel at 60, but there are also parts that are in the lower 50s. Just to the east of Madison, we're seeing temperatures 
temperatures at 52 degrees. Now, if we look at the current wind speeds, the good news is that we're not really seeing a lot of winds, most areas below 10 miles per hour. Looking at current Doppler track across the entire state, we are dry right now and really across the entire Great Lakes and Midwest. This evening, we're going to see more clear skies with temperatures dropping into the 40s around 7 p.m. It is going to be a pretty chilly night as those temperatures are expected to drop into the 30s. Now, there is a small frost concern, but in general, we're not expected to see a ton of it. There is a frost advisory in the central portion of the state, but not for southern Wisconsin. But nonetheless, it is expected to be cold. I'll have more details on our next chance of rain coming up a little bit later. All right, Jacob, thank you. Well, the Badgers will be without their starting quarterback, Tanner Mordecai, for several more weeks after he broke his hand in the game against Iowa on Saturday. Mordecai underwent surgery yesterday. As of today, it's unclear if the senior will play again this regular season. Redshirt freshman Braden Locke took over as quarterback in the Iowa game and is expected to start going forward. Wisconsin will travel to Champaign to take on Illinois before hosting Ohio State on October 28th. Skies over Madison may be a little noisy over the next two weeks. The Wisconsin Air National Guard planning to run F-35 training flights. It'll happen tonight through Wednesday and then again next Monday through Thursday. Officials say those flights could run as late as 830. And while most training happens during the day, the pilots are required to train at night as part of their overall re readiness. This week, you can unleash your curiosity at the 13th Wisconsin Science Festival. The festival runs today through Sunday in 50 counties across the state with multiple events the whole family can enjoy in person or online. The festival's goal is to give people of all ages the opportunity to learn something new in different areas of the sciences. Anybody can be a scientist. Science is everywhere and all around us and is happening all the time. And um, you're never too old to learn something new and you're never too young to teach something as well. So. We really try and embrace that. The biggest event is this Thursday night at Science on the Square in downtown Madison. It runs from 5 to 9 p.m. A Madison man remains in a coma more than three months after being hit by a car on the north side. Tonight at 6, Kyle Pazorski checks in with his family and tells us more about the dangerous rise in reckless driving across Dane County. Kyle joins us now with a preview. 39-year-old Stephen Branch was using a crosswalk at North Sherman and Commercial Avenues when he was struck by a sedan in early July. Madison police believe he had the right of way with the crosswalk's lights on at the time of the crash. His life changed ever since. Stephen's brother Preston telling me in an interview three months on that his condition has only minimally improved, requiring 24-hour monitoring and care. It's like uncertain about the level of care he would need. They're saying that he might be in a permanent like vegetative type of state. The incident points to an issue seen all across Dane County. Local police tell me that reckless driving has seen a dangerous increase ever since the pandemic. Police I spoke to for this story say it's due to people changing their driving habits during that time. Coming up tonight on News 3 Now at 6, I'll have the full story on Stephen's condition and what police are doing and saying you can do to put an end to reckless driving. We will see you at 6, Kyle. Thank you. Now to the war overseas as fighting between Israel and Hamas continues. Ian Lee tells us thousands of children are getting caught in the middle. With war all around them, these young Palestinians are still managing to play like children when they're in the park. You can see rubble nearly everywhere you go. 13-year-old Omran says he and his friends are fully aware of what is consuming their lives. Planes above could bomb at any moment. It's unsafe. It, it's not fair that this is happening. It shouldn't be happening. Children make up almost half of Gaza's population, and many were living in poverty before this conflict. Now they're waiting in long lines for food and water, some living in tents at makeshift shelters. And hundreds are among the dead and wounded, many from Israeli airstrikes. Here in Israel, residents living along the border with Gaza are evacuating their homes in fear of Hamas. We leave the road because the situation is very dangerous here. Raya Schwartz and her children are boarding a bus for a safer part of the country. Their town of Sderot was once specifically targeted during the initial attack and has since been hit with rocket strikes. For other Israeli families, life is at a standstill. 
with loved ones held hostage. I ask Hamas, which is holding my family, I hope again in good health, please stop, and the Israeli government to please stop and just bring the women and children back. Israel's military says Hamas has nearly 200 hostages. Ian Lee, CBS News, Tel Aviv. Hamas says it will kill hostages if Israel strikes civilians without warning. As Israel prepares for a ground invasion, it's unclear how and if hostage negotiations will take place. And meanwhile, a group of tech, intelligence and social media experts are working to find those hostages. Volunteers are scouring social media and using artificial intelligence to compare images of the missing in order to locate them. Their work gives government officials a clearer picture of who's missing and who has been killed. You know, it's hard when you tell them that, that their beloved are dead, but sometimes they prefer to know. Hamas says more than 20 hostages have been killed in Israeli airstrikes. New at 5, the FBI is now investigating after an Illinois man was charged with a hate crime in connection with the stabbing death of a six-year-old Muslim boy. Dozens of mourners gathered outside of Chicago to honor Wadi Al-Fayyum, investigators say he and his mother were attacked by their landlord on Saturday because of their faith and the conflict in the Middle East. The boy was stabbed 26 times inside his home with a military-style knife. His mother was stabbed more than a dozen times but is expected to survive. The 71-year-old suspect has been charged with first-degree murder, attempted murder, and two counts of a hate crime. Coming up, Jacob has our complete forecast. Plus, we'll check in with Charlotte Deleste. She's one of the big winners tonight at the Edgewater Hotel. She'll have a preview of tonight's Best of Madison Taste Party. And a, strong, and a strong start to the week on Wall Street. The Dow is surging 314 and a quarter points. The Nasdaq jumps 161. S&P adds almost 46. And we'll be right back. You're the people who make junk disappear? We brought a whole truckload of magic. <laughs> we make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. For over six decades, Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Toyland has made wishes come true for everyone. Now through Wednesday, we're celebrating with great gifts at great prices throughout the store. Like women's Alfred Dunner fashion collections, half price, half off a Presto Pizza Pizzazz, $44.99, and this Fisher Price Tractor Gift Set, $29.99. Rewards members save an extra three bucks. Plus, donate new unwrapped toys to kids helping kids, and we'll match gifts up to $250,000. Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Toyland, where wishes come true for everyone. At Lawton Cates, being prepared and confronting every aspect of your injury case with honesty, integrity, and innovative solutions has earned us a reputation for excellence in representing the injured. Because at Lawton Cates, your life counts. Elevate your savings at the Century House. Right now, buy stressless recliners, sofas, and office chairs, and earn up to $1,500 credit toward the purchase of additional stressless furniture. Or receive $400 off the purchase of any stressless signature base or cross-base recliner in Ottoman. Don't wait. Shop the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. Rugability. We straight made that word up. How else to describe the otherwise indescribable, rugged, capable, incredible versatility and affordability of a Honda SUV? Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com calls Honda the best value brand. Car and Driver calls Honda the winningest brand in 10 best history. But we like Rugabilityity, and you'll like the Incredifantabulous deals, so see your Wisconsin Heartland Honda dealer today. Honda gets Wisconsin. We wanted to be able to enjoy all four seasons and patio enclosures helped us make that dream come true. The one and only patio enclosures. You're the people who make junk disappear? We brought a whole truckload of magic. <laughs> what if I got junk? I love you. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. We have continuing coverage in Whitewater. After leading police on a manhunt, an 18-year-old man is arrested for allegedly holding a woman hostage for multiple days. Jalen Banks is on scene with the latest from the investigation tonight at 6. 
tonight at 6. Reckless driving is dangerous driving. News 3 now shows you what's behind the surge in reckless driving throughout our area and what police are doing and what you can do to help put the brakes on the problem. Reckless roads tonight on News 3 now at 6. Happening tonight, House Republicans are reconvening on Capitol Hill for another closed door meeting to see how far apart they are in the battle over selecting a new Speaker of the House. Skylar Henry has more from Washington. Jim Jordan stayed on Capitol Hill over the weekend, meeting with Republican colleagues who still are not on board with his becoming the next Speaker of the House. We'll listen to, uh, to concerns you may have. Uh, I think none of those concerns are anything that, that, that we can't, we can't uh, address, so I feel good about where we're at. Jordan did gain some momentum when the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, Congressman Mike Rogers, announced on Twitter he is going to vote for Jordan. But at least a dozen or so House GOP members still oppose him, leaving Jordan well short of the 217 votes needed to become Speaker. Frankly, if you look at the dynamics of our conference, um, there, there's not a single member who can, can satisfy 217 members. That has prompted some to speculate that Republicans may need to cut a deal with Democrats in order to seat a new speaker. If there is a need, if the radical, you know, almost just handful of people in the Republican side make it unable, make it us unable to be able to return to general work on the House, then I think obviously there will, a deal will have to be done. So far, all of the voting has taken place behind closed doors, with only Republicans casting votes. But GOP leaders are planning to hold a full vote on the House floor Tuesday, voicing their members to say publicly whether they support Jordan or not. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Well, a chance to dry out this week after a rainy weekend. Here's Jacob with a closer look at the forecast. Thanks, Susan. Here are the look, here's a look at the three things you need to know for the week ahead. Tonight, we are going to see those cool temperatures as lows will drop into the 30s. For the most part, though, tomorrow is going to be pretty quiet. Then some showers will, will roll in Wednesday and Thursday, but the rain isn't expected to be nearly as bad as it was last week. So looking outside, still seeing completely clear skies. And for the most part, that is the case throughout really all of Wisconsin as we're seeing Pretty much no rain, not just in Wisconsin, but the Great Lakes and Midwest pretty dry at this hour. And looking at future track, we are going to continue to see the clear skies for the overnight hours. Maybe a few clouds here and there, but generally we're going to see clear skies. And tomorrow we'll see mostly sunny to partly sunny skies with temperatures rising possibly in the 60s for some. Now we are going to see some clouds roll in tomorrow night into early Wednesday. And then during the day on Wednesday, we're going to begin to see some of those scattered showers. Now they're not expected to be very heavy and there are parts of our area that may not see any rain at all. It all depends on where some of these showers form, but even if they do uh, form over any given area, like I mentioned, it's not going to be very heavy. Maybe by the time we get to uh, Wednesday night and early Thursday, we could see some pockets of moderate rain, but once again, not expect to see a lot of rain uh, with these showers, and they're also not expected to last very long. So total precipitation of this upcoming rain it's only going to be about at most a half inch, so this will really not be a huge issue, but it could cause, you know, a few uh, wet times during uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Now, looking at the low temperatures for tonight, as I mentioned, they are going to be pretty chilly. Those will likely be dropping into the 30s for much of our area. Some places may stay near 40, but it's going to be a pretty cold night. But then tomorrow afternoon, it's going to be pretty nice uh, for the most part. You know, we're kind of getting used to these 50s, so it's going to be in the 50s again. 60s near Iowa, plenty of sunshine, a few clouds here and there, but not much. For Wednesday, despite the rainfall, we actually may see high temperatures in the lower 60s. We are going to see a bit more cloud cover, and as I mentioned, we are going to see those showers, but the rain is not going to be a huge issue. Now, here's a look at our photo of the day sent in by Sue Clearfield, showing two pups. Look like their names are Sam and Luna playing together in a field, so thank you for sending that in, Sue. And you can send in your own photos through the app or through the email address right here on screen, firstworn at WISCTV.com. For the seven-day forecast, we're going to see highs mostly in the 50s. Like I mentioned, we could see 60s Wednesday, but 50s for the rest of the 10 day forecast. Dry for the weekend, another chance of rain by the middle of next week. This rain chance also doesn't look to be as severe as the rain we saw last week. Now, for your first warn traffic, pretty green across much of Madison. A few slowdowns near Verona, but a lot of Madison, pretty good. Uh, some smaller slowdowns within the city, but the Beltline and Interstate both green in, dire in both directions. Uh, down south, it's also green towards Janesville and up 
north towards the Dells. We're also seeing green on the interstate. And look at the times. We are looking uh, pretty good at this hour. So that's your first warrant traffic. Back to you guys at the desk. All right, Jacob, thank you. We are celebrating everyone and everything that makes living in Madison so great. The Best of Madison Taste Party kicks off tonight. News 3 Now's Charlotte Deleste live at the Edgewater with a preview. Charlotte. Eric and Susan, it's a Monday, and I got sent out to downtown Madison to party. <laughs> that's, all, that's the craziest thing ever. We're at the Best of Madison party. This is going to be tremendous. We are at the Edgewater Hotel in downtown Madison. Let me tell you, this is sold out. 350 people are going to be here, and there are 18 vendors. They are winners of Best of Madison. There are 553 winners we are celebrating tonight from 182 categories. And just so you know, this Best of Madison poll has been around for 42 years now. So it's quite impressive. And really what is impressive, I got an amazing story for you here. This is Abby. She is from Emmy Roth Cheese. We know Emmy Roth Cheese. In fact, the entire world knows Emmy Roth Cheese. Tell okay. us about this big one. So back in 2016, mm -hmm. we won the World Championship Cheese Contest for our Grand Cru Cheese. Mm -hmm. It was the first time a U.S. maker had won in over 30 years, so we're very proud of this. That is a big deal. It is. Huge deal. Yes. Now, but this is what's shocking to me. This is the first year you have placed in Best of Madison. It is, yes. So we're a little bit behind here, even yes. though this is your home. Yes. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's got to be a really good feeling to be <laughs> recognized here at home. Yes, absolutely. And you're prepared to feed people. We are. We have a lot of cheese coming tonight. Okay. Tell me quickly, what kind of cheese are people going to eat tonight? We have four of our favorite cheeses, Gouda, Havarti, Grand Cru, mm -hmm. and um, our newest, Tomato Basil Havarti. All right. There you have it. If you're not going to be here tonight, you can still get it at the store. And they're so good. All right, we're going to send it back to you, we'll, but we'll be back here at 6 o'clock because we're going to show you the full party going on. All right, Charlotte, who is also best yes, of Madison, she is. we need to point out. Thank you, Charlotte. Still at RSV leads to millions of trips to healthcare providers every year. How uh, you can avoid it in your family this year. That's next at 5. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Trust your feet to Morgan's Shoes. Why Nout? Why not? Feel the comfort and durability of Nout footwear at Morgan Shoes. Nout shoes and sandals feature full grain leathers in a multitude of colors. Nout's cork and latex composite insole is designed for daily comfort and support. And they are made to last. You'll enjoy Nout's luxury. Shop Morgan Shoes Hilldale for your next pair. Morgan Shoes. Trusted since 1961. Morgan Shoes Hilldale. Lately, we've all had to do more with less. At Chevy, we just want you to do more. So we continue to make affordable vehicles like high-tech SUVs, our most capable trucks, and the most affordable EV in America. It's how Chevy helps you do more for less. Or qualified lessees can get this Equinox for around $2.99 a month. Or get 2.9% financing on all 2024 Equinox models when you purchase. Menards will help you stack up big savings when insulating your home. Plus, save 11% on all insulation. A properly insulated home can save you money on your utility bill, all while increasing your family's comfort. Plus, stack on the savings and save more money with additional federal tax credits on qualifying energy efficiency home improvement purchases. Get a roll of R13 Craft paper-faced insulation for twelve ten after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. Are record energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes? With inflation rising at record levels and incomes not keeping pace, you might be one of tens of thousands of Wisconsin residents who are struggling to survive in the blistering heat of summer or the bitter cold of winter. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. 
For a hand up, apply today and call 1-800-506-5596. That's 800-506-5596. Or visit www.kwwf.org. The best night's sleep starts on a new Beautyrest from Steinhoffels. During our anniversary sale, Beautyrest Queen mattresses start at only $3.99. Upgrade to the luxury and comfort of a Beautyrest Black for just $44 per month when you use Steinhoffels' special 72-month financing. And save up to $800 on Beautyrest Black adjustable base sets. Plus, you'll get $300 in Steinhoffels cash. Shop in-store or online at steinhoffels.com. Relax, it's Steinhoffels. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Every year in the U.S., respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, leads to more than 2 million health care visits. But this year, there's a new way to help prevent severe illnesses from the virus. Mandy Gaither has more. It's a new weapon against a common and contagious virus that may change the hold that RSV can have over young children during respiratory virus season. It gives an extra layer of protection to these babies, so if they get RSV, they won't get as sick. Dr. Juanita Mora with the American Lung Association says the new treatment is a monoclonal antibody. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends it for all babies younger than eight months born during or enter their first RSV season. A vaccination can also be given during pregnancy if you're 32 to 36 weeks pregnant in RSV season, which is September through January in most of the country. The antibody is also recommended for some children between the ages of 8 and 19 months who are at higher risk of severe illness because of a pre-existing condition. Now it's readily available in pediatricians' offices, and it's also available in um, Department of Health clinics. Most people, including infants who get RSV, have only mild symptoms similar to a cold, but it can also be severe, even life-threatening. Mora says RSV can cause dehydration if a child won't eat or drink and can make it hard to breathe. These are the two indications that I teach parents where they should take them immediately to the emergency department. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And the CDC also recommends adults ages 60 and older talk to their doctors about RSV vaccination. They too are at increased risk for severe RSV illness. Stay with us. We're back with a final check of your first warned forecast when we return.